The next session of the day is a panel discussion which will navigate sports marketing across CTV. In today's dynamic media landscape where viewers are increasingly turning to CTV for their entertainment needs, the world of sports marketing is undergoing a profound transformation. Our speakers today will discuss the unique appeal of live sports content on CTV platforms, emphasizing precise audience targeting and personalized experiences. I would like to welcome our panelists for this session. Please welcome Sean Chandy, Chief Marketing Officer at Paragon Footwear. Nitin Khanna, Vice President of Marketing at ACO. Nitin Khanna, Vice President of Marketing at ACO. Gaurav Tyagi, Associate Vice President of Media Planning at Interactive Avenues. Lavleen Gajriya, Head of Media at PhonePay. And our moderator for this session, Jayant Kumar, Senior Business Director at Double Verify. Jayant, over to you. Thanks, Thanks Sakshi, for setting the context. And first of all, congratulations, agency report for completing six years. And I hope you continue like, you know, creating and you know, curating these kind of events like going forward. And, uh, so my name is Jayant. For those who are not aware, I'm part of Double Verify. So we are a third party verification company which authenticates the effectiveness of media quality. Uh, that was a sneak little pitch. So before we start, you know, they don't delve into the whole conversation, right? So today, I mean, uh, the couple of panels which we also had, you know, before spoke about one the roller coaster ride of CTV in the last year, right? And there was significant increase in the viewership, and also the people, like you know, 30 million is the current viewership which we have in the CTV right now. And also we spoke about the whiteboard of possibilities in the last session where we discussed about so what possibilities the CTV can throw at you and how we can actually kind of you know and also bursting the myths of CTV which you know like people think yes CTV is like a very safe environment where there is no fraud happens it's all brand safe and all of those things right so uh, for today's topic we have a very interesting one where we kind of talk about how do we transition from a traditional sports marketing into like from a stadium to screens right so transitioning from a, a stadium to a screen itself it's a that kind of through a lot of challenges and opportunities as well right so with that i'm going to start the conversations you know like uh, starting with sean right so the what factors have led to the digital becoming the new favorite for advertisers during the prime sporting events and how do these factors differ from the traditional preferences yeah hi good afternoon uh you know prime uh, when you think of sports i mean it was the good old days when, uh, even today, uh, you, you also all, always used to think of the television and uh, how television uh, is that, you know, the big impact property that, uh, it, you know, television gives that largeness to the whole sporting event. Uh, but with the advent of uh, CTV and with the advent of uh, more OTT players in uh, prime sporting events, what has happened is it has uh, allowed uh, smaller advertisers I would say, uh, uh, to put it uh, mildly, uh, advertisers like Paragon, for example, who wouldn't otherwise, um, you know, hedge their, and you know, a large part of their marketing budget onto a big sporting event like IPL or the World Cup uh, to enter in and uh, create an impact and in a very targeted manner. So that's been uh, uh, the advantage. Of course, uh, from a, uh, you know, what, uh, what I see it hap what I see happening is that uh, it is also uh, I mean increase the pie the, the size of the pie right the viewership pie so now you have many more people watching uh, IPL the pie is increased tremendously um, even Hotstar was forced to um, uh, give it free the, the ICC World Cup the last World Cup which happened in October November thanks to Geo Geo Cinema and uh, we have a lot more people uh, watching on their phones, on their tablet, handheld devices, which was not the case earlier, right? And in, and watching it on the move, uh, without paying anything for it. So I think it's uh, it's kind of revolutionary, like that in that sense. Uh, just a side note that you know, even um, a player like Netflix is planning to get into um, prime, you know, live sports, which is uh, traditionally is it's always been as we all know, just a pure play content 
platform is also planning to get into sports. So I'm sure, so sporting events has, uh, you know, bright future on uh, OTT and CTV platforms. I mean, interestingly, like, you know, uh, just like picking up the case study, which Amazon also, like, you know, been tied up with NFLs, right? And even NBA has been like, you know, been like now on the Netflix. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of continuing to kind of, you know, grow on the OTTs and one more thing which I, I know I'm, this is out of curiosity I want to ask, like, because when you're talking about, you know, the Geo or a Hotstar, right? So, there is always a thing between, like, there are two different metrics which this guy's throwing at us. So, one, we've always been used to the concurrent views, right? And now the Geo has come up with the cumulative views, right? So, how do you see that, you know, as a challenge when it comes to, like, you know, like navigating your overall KPIs there? Well, I have stopped uh, as a as a marketing head. I mean, as a marketer, I have stopped actually looking at that figure on the top right hand corner of the screen because it used to mean something, you know. But when you have some two crore people, I mean, they show two crores nowadays. Earlier, it used to be in lakhs, and you know, they were quite modest about it. So now it's, now it's like crore crazy. Now. now some random matches, you know, which have no consequence, have some crores of viewership. And we all know, sitting in this room, we are all professionals here, marketing professionals. We know that that number is not really true. So they are twisting the number data to make it sound interesting. So I honestly don't look at that. Uh, what I look at is uh, the kind of impression that we are delivering in our, uh, you know, geog the geographies that we are targeting to the TG that we are, uh, you know, uh, serving. And uh, what kind of response that I'm getting from that? What kind of uh, rewards that can I, I can derive out of that? And also like Gaurav, I mean, being a brand custodian, like how do you see this? Like, how, does it make any difference to your overall media planning? Just like uh, you mentioned. Good afternoon. So just like uh, Sean mentioned, so we don't look at uh, the cumulative views. So it's just smartly putting the concurrency in form of cumulative views. So it's about our own ad serving, our own tracking, and looking at our specific brand uh, relevant choices, what we are going after. If it is a, so we, look from that perspective and and then we get the numbers which are not reported as well so because brands are very prudent about their ad spend and there is a growing cost per spot which we are paying there's an inflation even though brands are prudent but spends are growing up and the cost per spot is also going up so we have to we have that uh, right to ask for those relevant kpis those metrics which are not reported also whether it's Hotstar, Geo, or other players. So, and then we look at concurrency, definitely. We don't look at accumulated views. And we also look at um, our other metrics. What is a SOV we need to build for those brands in the clutter market? Because since th uh, there's a downside of more brands now getting into the fold through CTV, there's more clutter also to be broken by the brands. So there it makes help uh, if we look at what is the kind of impression bump per match, what is the kind of SOV or the spots per match. So these are the metrics what brands are interested in to see whether they are making a mark in that clutter period. And also just one more thing, because since you mentioned the cost per spot is increasing, right? To, because see, on a year on year, there is a license fee which is now getting increased, right? And depending on the sponsorship which they're buying and it's keeping, so how do you stay relevant and making use of a technology like a artificial intelligence, right? To optimize your media spends and still stay relevant with this increasing thing, so the license fee or anything? So if you're talking purely from the sports marketing and Hotstar, Geo perspective, you can't optimize much as of now from the AI standpoint. Uh, we are still dependent on a lot of partner-led optimizations, though we keep pushing the partners to deliver as planned. And there are a lot of under deliveries, which we see there is always a optimism in terms of uh, OTT players that we will deliver X amount of, already this IPL there was a uh, ambition to go after f 55 to 60 million device reach on CTV. We, so far I think we are touching 35, 37. So, so there is always a push from our end that we need to be uh, sure on where the audiences are getting, uh, are we seeing any correlation. So there's no point fighting with them on cumulated views and other metrics. We know what we can tap into at our end through ad serving, through what are the search volumes for the brand during that duration, what are the kind of traffic, uh, organic traffic which is uh, getting affected through that activity, 
and any uptick in the sales or the bottom funnel. And that is the direct correlation matrix which we are taking and then uh, proving whether it's effective or not. Okay. Just a follow-up question to Lovely, you know, because since we spoke about uh, the subscription-based model and everything, right? So the streaming industry has seen a shift from subscription-based to the support ad supported models right now, right? And how has the streaming industry transitioned from a dominance of subscription to or even incorporating the ad supported models and the HPOD as well? One, one of the things which is very important uh, for this shift to have happened is that there are certain platforms, for example, sports is one, uh, news is another, uh, which lend, its, lend itself well into an ad supported naturally because then what, do you, what does a person do during that ad break? It's not a video on demand. So that's where streaming uh, has grown because there's a large ticket uh, option now available in term, terms of sports, news is something that uh, is shifting, you, do, you can no longer, I mean you want to watch live news, uh, you, will, you will not want to, uh, with connected TVs growing, uh, somebody will not want to opt for a cable connection just so that they can watch news, which is now not available on any of the OTT platforms post the regulations which have come in. So there's a whole lot of factor, uh, factors which have helped to grow, on top of it there are cases of uh, you know OEMs etc and a lot of guys getting into uh, streaming I think US is a very big market already for uh, streaming to grow Europe and Australia are growing uh, I've seen uh, those markets are evolving more mature uh, India is always seen as a market where new technology may come in slightly later in terms of audience, but the pickup is so fast that what other markets reach in 10 years, India will be able to do that in a much shorter time. So, uh, seen a lot of growth because people evolve. There are a lot of channels, there's a lot of fragmentation, there's a lot of people who will get a voice, a lot of smaller players will get a voice to be able to, uh, be able to uh, manage that. Uh, so, I think, yeah, sports will drive that. Uh, news is the second one which will drive that and that's where it is. Nice. Uh, Nitin, so, and I'm sure like, you know, the, the, the rise of IPL, you know, then again, there are a lot of new sports coming into the picture now, the Kabaddi and a lot of other things, right? So how does the live nature of, you know, the nature of a sporting event such as IPL contribute to a hyper-engaged audience and a unique advertising environment? So do you think the uncertainty of the tournament plays any role here? I'll answer the second one first. Uh, uncertainty obviously plays a role. I think the larger, and I think, see, depends the kind of sports that you're talking about, right? I think um, a cricket outside IPL, whenever you look at any any multi, um, multi-country multi tournament that involves India, right? Large part of viewership will depend whether India is continuing, not continuing, right? So how do you even uh, structure your deals in a way uh, so that as a brand you are protected against that uncertainty is I think a, a big challenge uh, right now that, that I think both uh, brand marketeers and media planners are anyway grappling with uh, specifically as the OTT industry also is on its path of getting a little bit more concentrated with probably Geo getting a bigger share of uh, either directly or through m &A. Right, uh, so uncertainty is there. Uh, however, I think like we've had experience where uncertainty is lower when you are invested on uh, slightly longer duration uh, sporting bets. Uh, like for example, like like not right now, but like uh, three years back, yeah. we started a journey with the English Premier League, right? And and we were we were the first ones to sort of uh, come on board with Hotstar and even encourage him to start monetizing the uh, Premier League base, right? Now, a tournament like that, when you start looking outside, you know, the big uh, world of cricket, gives you continuity for eight, nine months, right? So, uh, just by virtue of the duration of the sports event being a lot longer, you are able to mitigate the risk of uncertainty. Right, like a large part of viewership there, for example, is driven by the top six teams, right? So, uh, you know, 
if Man City is not playing well, then maybe Liverpool is playing well. If Liverpool is not playing well, maybe Arsenal is playing well, right? So, in some ways, as an advertiser, you are protected with uh, some un uncertainty that might automatically come in, right? Uh, now, to your first one, which was more on... Um, the hyper-engaged story. Yeah, so I think uh, 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 definite advantages, I think one is scale, uh, right? Uh, uh, st starting from the spectrum of... World Cup, cricket, IPL, and as you go down, uh, scale is a big thing. Uh, I think the other point which I, I think I was hearing the last 10 minutes of the last panel, I think uh, folks spoke in great detail about attention, right? And I think we're anyway living in a attention deficit yes. economy, right? Uh, what this gives you is probably, you know, uh, a little bit more attention from the user. You know, like they've also, uh, left other things that they were doing, you know, they are more free and they're more receptive and they're more attentive to uh, brand messages getting relayed, you know, when there is a large uh, sporting event, right? So if it's IPL happening, if it's cricket happening, if something else happening, uh, you know, let go of, you know, they've come down from after work and they're sitting there, they're probably more receptive in terms of that. So I think uh, large advantage of skill and attention there's obviously the clutter of brands that you spoke about that anyway you need to do, which is, I think, the job that your creative needs to do. Yeah. And but do you see this as a curse or a boon considering, you know, like IPL has created that kind of an environment, right? You know, it's a quick, you know, 20 overs and people are like glued to the screens and looking at a long format, you know, for any brand to be associated with, like, you know, how do you see that? Do you see any kind of a difference, you know, like only like the IPL or looking at a, the five test, you know, test match series or... No, see, depend on your objective at that point in time, right? Like, if, if you're looking at something which gives you an instant uh, hit in terms of, you know, if you're a very young brand, like, you want to get across the first hurdle of awareness, etc., right? Or, or if it's uh, high seasonality for your business, right? And you really want to make uh, sure that you're maximizing, uh, you know, on whoever is there to buy, etc. Right? Be it around festive or anything else, right? So, it will definitely help. Uh, the larger the opportunity that is there, right? However, for our perspective, we've also seen that uh, a lot of advertising that we do because our category is not extremely uh, cyclical when it comes to say health insurance or auto insurance or something like that. Uh, longer term properties have worked really well for us in sports marketing, outside sports marketing as well. For example, you'll see us on Shark Tank for three months. Mm -hmm. You'll see us on Premier League for eight months of the year. Uh, you know, you'll also see us doing, you know, the Big Bang three-week uh, cricket tournament in and out. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, my next question is to Kaurav. So, the, how about the recent advancement in technologies, right, uh, address the issue of lag, reliability, and the end-user experience in live sports streaming? So, that has largely been improved uh, because of, see, what are the major players doing? Geo has high network of those fiber optics across the country. 5G growth is humongous. But even at their end, most of these players have done uh, a lot of optimization in terms of their lower latency protocols. So when it comes to having a localized servers, uh, having a server size, uh, server side ad uh, delivery, or cloud based approach. So there are multiple approach which uh, people are using to reduce that lag, improving the quality and that 4K feed which we are getting across sports is improving every passing year. So there were some bugs if you remember during FIFA when Geo launched or even Hotstar last year we saw a lot of CTA ad button not loading and various such issues. They are no longer there. In this IPL at least for various brands what we are monitor we have not seen much of those lags and other things. So things are improving and across, not just one is better than a, another, most of them. But still, that because of that 4K spe uh, feed and other things, still that two to three ball delay is there, um, which is not as closer to the live action as, it's reduced, but it's still there. It's not as uh, closer to the action as uh, SD feed, which is only one to two ball. So, but it's getting there. Because that is the amount of quality also which they are bringing. I'm sure the same thing was when Joe also faced when they started like you know the streaming yeah. for the first time. Yeah, and uh, and also like this question is for like Sean and you know, 
both of you, which I want to kind of you know, hear your point of view. So how does the programmatic ad serving contribute to a lower cost of entry for advertisers in CTV? And what specific advantages does this you know, accessibility create? Um, so like I said, when I, in my, when I started speaking about this, that uh, uh, these kind of uh, options, uh, you know, they are more cost effective options for advertisers like Paragon. Um, and it enables us to be part of the um, the whole, you know, the whole uh, this kind of big, big ticket properties. Okay, so um, I remember last year before Geo uh, uh, Cinema decided to got the rights for IPL, uh, when the agencies <laughs> met us and said that would you consider IPL, and, and I said no way, no way. I mean, there's no way that I can, I'm going to put 50% of my uh, budget, you know, on uh, one property and then, you know hope and pray that some miracle works and you know whatever so uh, but then then this option came in and this was possible because of the uh, interesting cost uh, uh, you know proposition that they had uh, the way they they planned the uh, the cost structure of the you know the, the deal uh, which made it very interesting and enticing for us uh, and uh, yeah so that gave us a distinct advantage uh, I think um, Gaurav would be in a better position to talk more in detail about the programmatic buys. But from an advisor point of view, uh, it was, uh, and and you've seen so many uh, smaller advertisers come in, right? So many localized advertisers come in. Yes. If I'm, we are in Bangalore, uh, when we watch uh, IPL in Bangalore, if you're watching on Geo, which many people are, you see a whole new set of advertisers. Yeah. Yesterday, somebody came to me and they were talking about how, about Arun ice creams. I said that uh, I had never heard of this brand. I'm from Mumbai, basically. I moved here last year. I never heard of this brand. And that brand is something like 8,000 crores. Yeah. Um, Amor as well, which Hardik Pandya is like promoting. Uh, yeah, and it's it's uh, sponsoring uh, uh, Hyderabad and, yeah. and all that. I mean, you would have never, I don't think they would have done it on a national network, right? Yeah. They would have not done it uh, if it hadn't been for such kind of cost effective options, which gives them very specific targeting. And Gaurav, yes. Uh, and so also, like, one more thing which I mm. want you to kind of address is like, how I mean, I'm sure like using a lot of technology to kind of you know bring down your media cost as well, right? Yeah. So, and I'm sure you used uh, AI tools like Cybers or like you know some yeah. other tools. Like, so how do you see that, and how do you kind of you know tackle with this, you know, bringing the cost down there? So uh, first, uh, on the earlier point about programmatic and sports marketing specifically, is not happening much. It's the newer avenues. Uh, what we are seeing, uh, Hotstar has opened it up, uh, where you can uh, programmatically ad serve there are various other networks uh, which can use it for the performance objectives as well you in uh, like uh, what sean mentioned we want to utilize smaller budgets we want to look at more performance driven kpis and and many brands are doing and i'm uh, i'm sure lovelyne can add to it because the way uh, they also do it at phone pays and so e not just utilizing ipl from the awareness standpoint but also how we can use it from the bottom funnel goals. And so you're not keeping enough budget there. You're keeping very smart, small pies of budget, but you're keeping them very focused towards those goals and KPI. The, there is a downside that not everything what you get to see from the direct buyers will be available on programmatic. Uh, so you can't have those same integrations. You can't have same uh, L, L bands or same uh, kind of properties which has visibility. But you can, at an inventory level, you can definitely go programmatic route. To answer your second question, see, we are not using much of those AI-based optimization on IPLs or uh, sporting events per se. Maybe we'll reach there uh, in time to come. But for the rest of the buys across programmatic, uh, we are going after that one KPI which is important for the brands, whether it's cost per view, whether it's VTR, whether it's CPMs, it varies from brand to brand. And then whether Skybits, MediaMind, and various other in-house uh, tools, they help us optimize towards that uh, KPI. And uh, with the promise that we don't have to increase that cost X for brand to X plus Y. Within that uh, cost X, how we can manage the optimization yes. through AI. So there is more efficiency being brought into the table. So those are the models which we are looking at and using those custom queries al algorithm, using some of the partner yeah. who are also doing very good in terms of utilizing those AI-based algorithm on the fly to optimize for certain KPIs. 
So that is working out for us and largely for FMCG because they are very particular about uh, the cost per reach or the uh, kind of CPT yeah. in comparison with the traditional media and the TV. They want to be more efficient in their digital bias, digital video bias for that matter. So it is really helping. Okay, any point of view from Lovelyn on this one? For us also, uh, I think one of the questions we keep asking uh, our agency and the platforms is uh, the numbers that you give us. What I mean, you're the ones giving us these numbers. There is no third party. There is no yeah. measurement, right? So how do we keep tracking? Even BLSs, etc., are very query based, <laughs> right? So. Um, I think the question is like how uh, we start developing models to track and attribute uh, the, the ads that we are putting because the dollar value of these ads is going up year on year, tournament by tournament. And if it really means that you ne want the kind of money that uh, linear TV, uh, sports on linear TV has been asking, then there has to be a whole lot of measurement that has to be provided. I think that's the next. I mean, I would like to add that that should be the next ambition for the industry as a whole. That was the bottom line to kind of, you know, like get to the measurement, like, you know, why we come into picture. I mean, advertiser, yeah. So, and yeah, ensure that the measurement is the key for the CTV sale. So, yeah. So, Nitin, like, so do you think the free access to the live sports content necessarily translate into viewership at scale? The option is not to He's going to get free. So, it'll <laughs> So yeah, you will get scale, but, but, but I think uh, the important one for brands is uh, relevancy of that scale. Like, like you know, uh, just to give you an example, like you was mentioning, right? Uh, uh, World Cup on Hotstar this year, they had to open up to go free because of geo pressure and everything. Uh, right, right. But we chose to not exercise the free option, not go after everybody. Right, so you will get scale, but I think uh, depends on what part of that scale is relevant for you. And I think that's where uh, all the intelligence that our agency partners, our media planners, etc., are able to bring to the table. So the relevance is a key here to kind of ensure yeah. that you're reaching out to the right audience. See, like, like, like uh, sports and specifically mass sports is a great equalizer within the nation, right? Like you will see the, you know, the guy who's driving the auto also watching it on his phone, and you will see the CEO of your company also watching it on maybe like a 115 in screen device, whatever, right? So. Everybody is watching it. It's free. Anyway, it's opened up to everybody. What part of that scale do you really want, uh, which matters for your business objectives, which matters for your marketing objectives, is I think the tough call that we will need to take. Now, how do you see this from the, you know, like from an agency point of view while you're kind of doing your media planning? Like, does it really affect your overall scheme of things? It definitely impacts their more adoption on CTV. If you're talking about this continuous second year uh, free, by both the major players, uh, what if I only go by the stats and the numbers, uh, there is some comparison to last year IPO, there's already some 150% uh, jump in the CTV spend in just one tournament. So while for the larger digital edX, it is a, still a very small pie, uh, but if you are comparing only on the sports marketing lens and IPL in particular, it is roughly touching 50-50, which is a big, jump if we see lower trust levels on CTV maybe a couple of years back. So that is definitely changing the course. But as uh, Nitin mentioned that uh, uh, brands are very prudent about where they have to pre be present. Free uh, reach and the uh, YOI growth rates are not enough. And like Lovelyne also mentioned that brands doesn't trust uh, the BLSs at the partner's end. Third party measurement is very critical. Yes. We That's don't true. have something as unified as Bark, which is there in case of television. So there is a, maybe in seven to eight months, we may see that uh, unified measurement of Bark coming for CTV. There are some talks going on. There's some uh, discussion around Comscore measurement on CTV, which may do the trick for the digital marketers. So these are some of the, like Lovely said, these should be our ambition how to solve for this because these absolutely i think ways. number one priority should be that yeah. you cannot be the maker and the checker at your end right like absolutely there is some truth in basic accounts and audits that we were talking about yeah broker ho ki, a party ho that, that nobody knows right <laughs> like, like it's all the same so
Yeah, I, I mean, those are such fantastic numbers that sometimes <laughs> you like you're boggled. I mean, yeah. there's really, three different I mean, see, <laughs> there are three different numbers or four different numbers yeah. at least on right. how many CTV homes there are in the country, and these vary from 25, 28 million to 60, Correct. depending on who and your source. Yeah. And this is like it's not even a variation which is uh, five, ten percent, twenty percent here and there. But these are three x to zero point three three. And trust me, like we, like partners like us, will definitely able to solve the purpose here, the cross-platform measurement, which we can able to, able to address, you know, like whatever this, you know, the the discrepancy can be kind of an address there. So just a fun fact. So, so brands are already frustrated by this and are multiple numbers. There's no one source of yes. truth to it. Already, and Lovelyn can <laughs> add to it because there is already a triangulation from multiple sources to arrive at data, which agency has to do. Yeah. There's no point. So if uh, Geo is saying we'll touch some 55, 60 million CTV unique devices in the cycle, we know that's not true. But it's also not the case that 30 million, uh, at the start of the start talk, you said yes. 30 million. It's much more than that. Uh, it's bases are triangulation. You're not just going by Comscore. You're not just going by a TGI. You're not just also, you're looking at YouTube also as a surrogate. Because every CTV device has a free YouTube to watch. And then you're using multiple methods to arrive at it. And then there are partners, industry partners who are custodian on the CTV ecosystem. You are doing a triangulation at all times. So uh, basis that the number after IPL ends could be around 45, 45. from multiple triangulated sources. But it not, uh, and currently it's still 37. It's hovering around 37. And brands, individually are only able to reach out to some 12 to 15 million devices because the clutter is such huge no one brand can uh, kind of have an access to all the CTV devices. So and, and then when you compare it to uh, linear TV reach uh, which is measured forget the fact that uh, we our belief in the bark system and all that that I'm leaving that aside but you know that there is at least some amount of transparency on how much the program or the event or the sports tournament uh, delivered and how much was your delivery as a advertiser in the break of that yeah. so there is yeah. that that you know so if you suddenly as an advertiser are sold an event basis saying that hey I have X million uh, uh, viewers who are coming on but then when you advertise and you finish the tournament if you are not able to reach even 50 percent of those that seem I mean that seems a little odd because you know sports tournaments especially IPL World Cup these are how many ads are there in a break there are it's it's only fall of wicket it's only over change uh, on during live streaming the ad breaks are shorter two ads three ads max uh, in a break, uh, so where did the ad, uh, where did the viewers go in the middle, True. even if you are amongst True. the top? I mean, that brings to my next question. I mean, for oh Lovely. So I mean, I mean, you covered kind of, kind of covered most of it with this thing only. So how have recently conducted sports events in India influenced the digital viewership landscape, and are the are there any insights into scalability challenges faced by these events? So I'll, I'll answer the second one since I've answered most of the first one. Uh, the second one first is I think one of the scalability uh, issues will come in uh, largely because of the cost of uh, co the cost to uh, buy into broadband, uh, which is you know for a seamless porting uh, experience you need a broadband of 80 to 100 Mbps yes. at least. Uh, so and if you really go back and see how much that costs. On top of it, if you have to, like, while Geo has made it easier, but if you had looked at what Hotstar CTV was still behind a paywall, you still had to subscribe. On top of it, you have to subscribe to your other things, uh, which means that in these your times of inflation, it becomes a little uh, challenging for a viewer to invest, continue investing in a lot of. Uh, uh, so the way in which. Uh, CTV, uh, CTV platforms bouquet uh, the entire, because right now everybody is fighting each other, right? Unlike television, while they're fighting for viewership, nobody is fighting each other on how it, the how the broadcast or the channel will uh, be thrown at. There's one cable and satellite operator or a DTH player who's uh, on whose platform the uh, we are able to watch pieces, a package that or a bundle that you're getting. 
right so yeah. that's where the uh, that's where the discussion should be on how to bring the scalability okay uh sean so in the realm of connected tv so what unique opportunity does sports marketing offer compared to traditional methods and especially considering the diverse viewer demographics uh the like i think i mentioned this and uh, i might be repeating myself but the the targeting from an advertiser point of view the targeting the sharp targeting that we can achieve in ctv is something that obviously uh, you couldn't do in uh, linear television um especially with big sporting properties right so that's the biggest advantage uh, geographical <laughs> targeting is another thing because um unlike uh, maybe phone pay and aco uh, we have certain markets where we are strong and we would like to focus on those and not spread ourselves too thin um you know so bringing your contextual as well uh, bringing contextual uh, yeah of course and of course uh, getting so we so we we are not a very i mean for us e-commerce does not contribute a lot to our top line uh, but we saw a huge traffic to our uh, website and uh, you know huge traction on our digital platforms um, thanks to advertising on ctv we we did mostly the handheld devices but through digital platforms uh, advertising on digital platforms on sporting events we have seen that kind of traction and that has been uh, useful for us um but i just want to <laughs> bring up one point and this is uh, something which uh, i think traditional advertisers will relate to um the challenges that we face on digital advertising uh, whether it's on handheld device or ctv is that uh, you know the kind of uh, exposure that you would get on a, on a linear television on, on regular like if you advertise on spa, star sports uh, would not be the same and funny thing was you know like last ipl uh we we started and we watching uh, each and every match from the from the first match onwards and we had specific teams that we were following and um, my boss calls me up and says that uh, where is that adnitika <laughs> 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 i said sir is star sports this is not star sports <laughs> you will not <laughs> so the, the the most common way of deflecting it is you know the tg yeah <laughs> so true <laughs> you are acca we are targeting bcd so you know <laughs> it's uh, we've gone through this whole trail like yeah, like yeah this is a, this is the most common thing to the extent that this year when we went on world cup we said ki you know we don't want to go into all that ki you are picking this targeting that targeting give me the traditional sport planning experience on connected <laughs> tvs if one is seeing it then everybody is seeing it like i don't want yeah. to be in a situation where like at 10 o'clock at night you're getting a ceo calling you get any dikh raha hai so we got like 70 million uh, impressions or something that's what what uh, the agency sent us and uh, half my sales team has not seen my ads so <laughs> so then uh, that becomes a challenge so i said i told my boss that nikalo kuch 20 25 crore nikalo kar denge hum log sab ka ad dikhega I think we're running short of time. I think this. I'll bring to the last question. We'll wrap it up after this. So, Gaurav. So, in what ways do attribution and tracking tools in the live sports streaming differ from the traditional linear, you know, linear TV advertising? First and first. how does this impact the effectiveness of the campaign? Uh, see, the tracking and the measurement is largely limited to your ad serving what you are doing from the brand side, and it, specifically around sports marketing, what we are talking. So, you know what number of impressions spots. and partner and reports you are correlating with your uh, uh as i mentioned it's beyond a point you have to lean into the other metrics because that may not be enough like the same uh, happened with our set of brands also uh, there was a fashion uh, apparel brand uh, where the exact same issue happened and we have to midway change the things from cpm to spot buy and open targeting like you said so because everyone should see so these are the new models emerging now because tv kind of behavior also is sort of to but at the end of the day it's the uptick what you can see while for many brands is uh, their mt uh, the uh, and other offline channels are more uh, basically important in terms of their uptick is not as much online ecom but there is a definite uptick in terms of the mind measures in terms of some third party ratification through search volumes some uh, measurement in terms of the traffic going up or the for app base accounts it's more about the how downloads is moving up in that duration and can you make it more effect effective in terms of the quality of those audiences because we know the scale will come sure. from these tournament but how the quality of audiences has come from them 
Uh, this is the last question for all of you guys. So in the light of the rise of connected TV, so what potential shifts are expected in sports viewership and advertising trends? And how might the key sport, the key, key sport events serve as a prime example of this in the you know, impact in 2024? Um, okay, I'll just say it. I think, uh, and call me biased, but sports is best enjoyed uh, on a large screen. Okay, uh, so where uh, CTV comes in is it frees up your handheld device uh, because there's also a co lot of correlation between when you're watching a live event or a, a or or something and uh, you your social media activity because people like to uh, dual task and that large experience is what is going to drive uh, CTV for even for people with also the pricing of smart TVs falling and becoming yeah, more mass. Even the starting price is like 6,800 rupees for Correct. smart TV now. So the, yeah. smart, the, the pricing the, and the fact that you uh, humans have now evolved to multitasking sure. uh, whenever they are watching something, the attention span is reduced, that will help uh, drive so human behavior and the market. Sure. So, Sean, your point of view? Uh, you know, uh, the thing is that um, CTV is still a, a, a fairly rich man's game, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not going to address the point of view, but who's the viewer at the end of the day? Uh, we talked about broadband, we talked about uh, entry barriers like pricing of the platforms, uh, the kind of uh, money you shell out for a broadband connection. We take it for granted in this sitting in this room. But think about the guy who's an auto rickshaw driver or a a uh, swiggy delivery boy he can't they can't really afford to have uh, so uh, i think uh, the scalability and and uh, will only happen i mean while we would definitely want to watch uh, sports on uh, on big screens but um, the democrat uh, democratization of uh, sp this viewing viewership will only happen through handheld devices and the more people get uh, you know are free to watch it with what, whatever you know, marketing pushes that push that these guys have, that platforms have, that is going to make a big difference to the the entire game. Okay, Nathan. So I think one shift, uh, you know, like I think from uh, a platform experience, even advertisers looking out for it. I think specifically the digital connected TV realm should get richer in the form of connected experiences, right? Like I think like. I remember a couple of years back uh, when Hotstar was coming up with a few of its innovations on the live stream period, there was a beautiful integration uh, that Swiggy had done, right? Which is, you know, like, like if you look at the user and his mindset at the point in time, right? He would want to probably enjoy the game with a pizza and, uh, you know, and a Coke or something else getting delivered, right? So uh, I think that in some ways was a starting point where you're not even only looking at it from a pure play advertising perspective, but how are you able to join the dots to probably uh, give the business a push from a connected experience standpoint. So for example, you're watching something, you know, when he spoke about connected devices and uh, she was speaking about like a, a dual screen uh, phenomenon, but your uh, mobile phone is still free. So you're yeah. watching something and you get served an ad for something like that, that translates onto the next level in terms of giving you a push to buy or purchase, which is also contextual to the environment that the sports marketing thing is, you know, that the sports event has built for you. I think these sort of connected experiences, I think, like more engaging ad formats, like, you know, QR code or yeah, whatever. Not just ad formats, but, but stuff that goes beyond just advertising, but is able to uh, push the user to take that one more step. All beautifully done, all contextually done. I Great. think in the next two, three years, maybe we'll see more of that. Great. So, Tia. Yeah, uh, plus one on what Nathan said, because more live engagement, yeah. growth at, uh, kind of a growth hacking during a live event is something what brands are seeking out since uh, those early Swiggy experiment or Lays also did a beautiful sure. integration early in the days. But uh, I think something Geo is already figuring out, maybe we'll see uh, integration of sort of GeoMart during IPL. And even the new Hero Cam and other things which Geo has been yeah. doing that yeah. has not been monetized yet. So we'll see more of such engagement at scale kind of a thing Probably coming up. Probably get to a stage that you know, like you go a Hero Cam and you see what Virat Kohli is doing, and it'll be like, hey, you like the watch here? Uh -huh. And shoppable, yeah. shoppability. Yeah, possibly. Okay. Discoverable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and thanks everyone for joining us.